All right. Well, here we go. Detroiter, Motor City, Minton State, Mel Tucker, jerking off. Mel Tucker, head coach, Michigan State football, a guy I put my faith in. Um, you made it. You may have if you're a Michigan State fan. I know thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people did. Not only did I expect the fucking bare minimum that we wouldn't have a guy fornicating to sexual assault survivors, um, a guy that would embarrass the university, embarrass alumni, people like me who are normal, go into the office. I wear my Michigan State shirt on Fridays before we play the game. I tell people happily, proudly, I went to Michigan State. I live in California. It hits a little bit different more. Everyone, UCLA, USC, Cal Berkeley, Washington, Oregon, wherever. I went to Michigan State, and I'm fucking happy to tell you it. Embarrassing people like me. Not only did I expect the bare minimum from the guy, I was sitting here in 2021, last year, the offseason of this year, making videos, recording podcasts, talking to my friends, telling my dad, whoever the fuck would listen. Wait, just wait until Mel gets this thing going. He won 11 games in year two. We had a Heisman candidate beat Michigan in one of the best games I've ever seen. Wait till he starts recruiting. That's his whole thing. Wait till he brings an elite talent to Michigan State. Wait till we got guys running the football, throwing the ball, blocking that you've never seen. At MSU, just wait on all that and then imagine what's going to happen. I was all the way in. Forget, forget the the bare necessities of being a normal human, not sexually assaulting people, representing yourself, and more importantly, the school, the thousands, the millions of which you represent in a decent manner. Forget all that. I thought this dude was going to do great things at state. I thought he was going to win big. At State, did I think he was going to win a natty? I don't know. I thought he would win a Big Ten at least, multiple Big Tens maybe. I thought he'd be in the running with MS or uh, U of M, Penn State, Ohio State every single year. I thought that was the shit we had on the horizon. Not a report coming out about him jerking off to the sexual assault lady at Michigan State. At Michigan State, bro. Of all fucking places, you're going to do something like that. Michigan State? Obviously, this doesn't fly anywhere. Alabama, Georgia, LSU, you name it. The biggest football programs in the world. You could go to Holy Cross, the, the cleanest, most tightly run, nothing, not a spot on their resume places in the world too. It doesn't fly. At Michigan State, we've been mired in controversy and people in, in positions of power doing sketchy shit for the last, like, decade. And at Michigan State, it didn't cross your mind to, uh, to think again, maybe? To say, uh, you know what? I know this is wrong. I know I shouldn't be doing this. I know this is gross. And if this ever got out, I'd be in deep fucking shit. But there was never the extra little, oh, we just had that Larry Nasser thing. Oh, D'Antonio had a couple trials and tribulations. Oh, they've even tried to bang up Izzo. That never walk, uh, came through your mind. That never, you didn't even consider like, oh shit, of all the places to be jerking off to sexual assault activists, maybe Michigan State is the last. That never happened. And it pisses me off how selfish it is. Just the people like, dude, we're all horny, Mel. We're all horny. Fucking Pornhub exists. You're married, dog. You've got a wife. I'm not married. I don't know the ins and, out of, ins and outs of marriage. I'm sure it's difficult. I'm sure there's challenges. Isn't that the point, though? Isn't that why people have girlfriends? Isn't that why people have marriages? It's because you get horny. Everybody's horny. You have someone you can always rely on. Let's get this thing out of me. Get this demon out of my body so I can go back to thinking clearly and doing my job the way everybody fucking expects me to. Jerking off to the sexual assault lady. I don't even know like what else there is to say. I made the video yesterday, encapsulated my ideas or my thoughts pretty well in like a two minute span. Um, it's more of the same. I think Mel Tucker is an all time fucking idiot. I don't know if there's anywhere else you can go with it. I mean, he's an all 
time dumb person like the MSU thing aside, you've got $95 million coming your way. You've got a wife. He's got two kids, bro. He's got family members. He has parents. He has uncles. He has aunts. He has good friends in his life. Everybody's got to be looking at him now. Like, dude, are you, what the fuck are you thinking, bro? Like this changes the way everybody in Mel Tucker's life will look at him for the rest of time. I'm pissed at him. I'm never going to forgive him. You're nuts. I will never in my life be like, yeah, Mel Tucker, he's not so bad after all. Fuck no. Fuck that guy. He embarrassed me. He embarrassed my people. He embarrassed one of the things in my life I hold closest to my heart. One of the things I'm most proud of. One of like the biggest pillars in my life. I've talked about it on here before. Sports aside, like my education aside, everything in life MSU has given me, it's it's up there with like my family. And he fucking embarrassed us on a national level in such a pathetic way. Like Jim Harbaugh, all right, he bought people, tea, he bought cheeseburgers and maybe had a recruiting violation. All right. Jim Tressel, okay, guys got tattoos. All right. What well, are guys jerking off with the sexual assault lady? What the fuck are you thinking? For 95 million bucks, bro, you can't log into Pornhub? For $95 million, do you know how much money $95 million is? You can't go break out one of your old nudie mags? You can't fly into Reno, Nevada and get a hooker and have her sign an NDA or something? Like, there's so many. If you're that horny and let's say your marriage stinks, you can't even get it up with your wife. If it's that dire straits in the marriage, there's so many other things you could do, bro. If you're worth 95 mil, you've got that on the way and you can't find a girl to consensually hook up with you and not ruin your life over it. You've got problems, dog jerking off on the phone and then telling her about it. Are you fucked in the head? It's so frustrating. It's so like, I'm sad. It sucks for the lady. Obviously, there's people going, well, she could have hung up the phone. They called 30 times. It couldn't have been that bad. Maybe she's it. Maybe she's the worst, too. Maybe she was baiting him. I don't care either way. It doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't fucking matter what her angle was. He still did it, and you can't do it. It's the one person outside of Tom Izzo's wife, bro. It's the one person you can't do that shit with. Are you fucking kidding me? Go to Crunchy's, find the cocktail waitress there, start giving her phone calls if you absolutely have to. It's the one fucking person. Oh my God. So I'm, I'm upset, obviously. I'm intensely angry with Mel Tucker. I'm intensely angry with the leaders at MSU that this shit just keeps on happening every fucking year at something with these guys. Every year, it's these people in positions of power that have once-in-a-lifetime jobs, that control billions of dollars, that represent millions of people. And they fuck up every single time they have the chance to. Every time we fuck up. Every time. Can you just give me someone who cares? Can you give me somebody at Michigan State who, when they make a decision, whether it's what they're going to have for breakfast that day or should I sexually assault someone this day? Can you give me someone who thinks about MSU before they do it? Can you see, give me somebody who cares enough to go, how's this going to reflect on the thing that I love on the people that I love before I do it? Can you just give me one person like that? Is that too much to ask at an enormous university with millions of capable fans and alumni? With successful people who do care, who would have that thought process? Can you give me can you give me one of them for a fucking change? Whether it's the football coach or the AD or the president or on the board of trustees, can you give me one of those people who goes, you know what, dude, before I commit a fucking crime today? Um, let me think about Michigan state. Let me think about what I represent for like 30 seconds. Let me just think about that before I commit a felony. Can you give me one? Can we have one fucking person who makes decisions that, that is capable of having that thought? It fucking is driving me insane. Like it's crazy that at a place like Michigan state, it's that difficult for us to get that right. We've got all the resources in the world. 
We've got uh, people that can do anything. We've got people that have built billion dollar companies from nothing. People that are some of the best doctors, scientists, engineers, whatever, you name it. Some of the best in the world. And we can't find a person who goes, you know what? Jerking off on the phone with the person who you bring in to talk to your team about not jerking off on the phone with others. You can't, you can't get yourself to not do that. Oh my God, man. It's so fucking frustrating, man. And you know what? I'm being a little selfish at the moment too, because I'm thinking about it from my perspective. It's just embarrassing. I'm upset that now I have to tell people Michigan State and they go, wasn't your football coach jacking off on the phone with people? And I'm like, yep, that's where I went to school. That's the colors I'm wearing today. That's who I'm going to go cheer for in an hour. That's, um, yeah. Obviously, I'm pissed about that, and that's selfish. And I'm pissed about now where the football program's going to go just as a fan. That's selfish. But I'm upset, dude. Players. There's guys who come from Florida, from Texas, from California, all over the country, all over the world, who came to Michigan State and trusted that guy. Them, their parents, sent their 18-year-old kid. They go, that Mel Tucker, he seems like a pretty stand-up guy. I trust him to take care of my kid. I'm living 2,000 miles away. I'll be able to call him on the phone. I'm not going to be able to be his parent anymore. Mel Tucker's kind of assuming that duty. There were parents that sent their kids to school going, I trust him to teach, you know, to kind of raise him these next couple years. And he's jerking off on the phone. It's fucking embarrassing. A student body, kids on campus. There was a shooting last year. Nasser a few years before that. And now we've got this guy doing this shit. It's like, <sighs> how do you keep doing it? How do you not think twice? How do you make such a poor decision? I'm 26. I don't have it all figured out. I'm an idiot. You know, I, like there's shit I could do better in my life. I think if I had $95 million on the way, I'd probably go, you know what, dude? I shouldn't jack off right now. Let me wait 30 minutes until the call's over and then I'll boot up my favorite star and then I'll jerk off. Like, I think I'm capable of having that thought process. Mel Tucker's like 30 years older than me. He's been through a lot more in life. He's seen people fuck up at the highest level. You would think when you're around and you're in these high leverage situations, he was at Georgia, he was at Ohio State, he was at Alabama. You go through all these places, you spend time with all these great people and elite coaches and people who fuck up on the other end of things. You think after being around those, you would have those experiences and go, all right, now I know a little bit more of what not to do. And you still fall into that shit. How are you that fucking horny, bro? I don't know what, like, I don't know what else there is to say. I mean, I'm glad they suspended him. He's going to get fired. Good, dude. Because you know what? All, even if like, let's say, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Even if it's not a fireable offense, if we got a guy running a football cr program who doesn't think it's a problem to be beating his meat on the phone with a sexual assault activist, he's probably got a lot of other places where there's going to be errors in judgment. There's probably a lot of other shit that might slip through the cracks. If you just give him more time, he starts to get away with jerking off on the phone. Now he goes, I could jerk off on the phone. What else can I fucking do? They gave me 95 mil. We start winning football games. I can do whatever the fuck I want. If this error in judgment came now, it was only going to get worse as time went on. So you know what, dude? Fucking see ya. And nobody, nobody, I don't care if you're Mel Tucker. I don't care if you're Magic Johnson. I don't care if you're Tom Izzo, bro. Nobody is greater than Michigan State. Nobody is bigger than the 600,000 people that make up the alumni of this place. Nothing matters more than what we stand for, our standards, our reputation. No one person, no coach, no player, nothing is bigger than Michigan State. I don't give a fuck who you are. Get out. You're done, bro. We gave you the shot. We gave you the keys to a kingdom. Maybe our kingdom's not as big as Alabama's. Maybe our kingdom's not as powerful as Georgia's or Ohio State's. Our kingdom's pretty damn good, bro. Being Michigan State uh, head basketball coach, the head football coach, the AD, whatever the case is, being in a position like that at Michigan State, that means something. That moves the needle. There are people who know who you are. 
you can't fuck up like this. A fuck up is like, oh, oh, I guess I forgot that I bought his parents that meal. Like the Miles Bridges thing. Oh, I forgot not my, what Miles did, but is it like, oh, I, I guess I paid for him and his mom to have lunch with me. That's a fuck up. That's like a, oh, all right. Well, shit happens, I guess. That's like a, all right, you fucked up. This is not a, you fucked up. This is an, are you an idiot? This is a U.S. 999 people out of a thousand and they go, what the fuck? And then there's the weird, the weird one who's going, yeah, you should jerk off, dude. This is 99.99. If you pulled the MSU's campus, you just stood outside Wells today going, do you think it's all right to jack off on the phone with sexual assault activists? Everybody's saying, what the hell are you talking about, man? Don't jerk off on the phone with her. It's not even like, a, all right, well, I could see what you were. No, I can't. We were going to pay you $95 million. I can't see what you were thinking. Keep it in your pants. Go, go home to your wife. Get an NDA. Do something. Oh, my God. I'm just so tired of it. I'm just so tired of it, man. So tired of the people in power. The people, I don't know if we trust, but somehow they weasel their fucking way into these positions and they represent us and they fuck up time and time again. I'm so tired. How do the most incompetent, dumbest motherfuckers get into these positions, dude? I'm doing a nine to five. I'm an engineer. I care more about Michigan state than everybody in the board of trustees, Mel Tucker combined. Let me have a role, bro. Pay me 95 K a year. I'll do it for a 1% of his salary. Let me do it. I promise you, I won't fuck up. I promise you I won't be jerking off to anybody. I promise you. Fucking morons. And beyond all that, the football program now. We just went four years. Boop. Nothing. Four years. Gone. Up in flames. Not shit to show for it. Four years. We talk about, oh, man, the cupboards were bare when D'Antonio came in. Fuck. He left us high and dry. All right, he's bringing in some talent. We're starting to recruit. Last two classes, top 25. Some of the best MSU's ever seen. It's starting to come along. We're getting guys from all these places. IMG Academy, we're in it for these five stars. All right, it's starting to get there. He's implementing his scheme. He's got some guys who can play. Okay, it's starting to come along. Boom. Right back to where we started. Four years of no progress. If anything, we just took a step backwards. Four years. Up in flames. Four years of your life. Four years of your life gone. Just like that. Gone. Like 20%, 18 17% of my lifetime of the MSU seasons I've seen. Just eradicated. Doesn't matter anymore. Doesn't matter. That's it. Who cares? Right back. No progress. Let's start back over again. Let's go hire someone again and talk about again how they're going to build progress. Again, it's going to take time. Again, they need to recruit. Again, wait for them to get their guys. Again, it's a slow pro Again, again, again. We're starting back over. I'm tired of that shit. It's Michigan State we're talking about. We're better than this. The fans deserve better. The players deserve better. It, it, it just should be better. Forget what we fucking deserve. It's Michigan State. With the resources and the number of people who care and what you have around you. It is better. It should be better. There's no excuse for it to not be better. And we're right back to where it fucking began. I'm sick of it. It cannot. It cannot be that hard to get a football program on the straight and narrow. It cannot be that hard to make year-over-year -year progress without some major fucking controversy coming out. It cannot be that hard. I'm sure it's very hard. To compete at the highest level. I'm sure it's very hard to compete with Ohio State and win big times. I'm sure it can't be that hard to go six and six and not jack off to people. It can't be that hard. It, re it really can't be. We've got a new facility. Matt Ishby has given all his money to us. You've got NIL. We're recruiting. It cannot be that hard to get Michigan State football up to a point of some sort of respect. You don't need to be playing for natties. You don't need to be Alabama. It cannot be that hard to be, all right, they're all right. It's Michigan State. They're pretty good. It cannot be that hard. But we make it seem like it is. It's fucking bullshit, dude. I feel bad for the players. They got to feel misled and just like, what the fuck? I mean, right? This year we've heard all about, like, the chemistry is better. These guys are playing for each other. They don't care about last year. 
Their eyes are set on, you know, at the task at hand. They're focused on Washington. They want to be great. They want to silence the critics. Mel Tucker's got them rallied. They're buying in. And then you find out, you wake up today or Sunday, whatever it was, and your head coach is doing that shit. You're waking up at 6 a.m. for workouts, going to class, working out again, going to class, back at practice, taking an exam and then watching film before bed, and your coach is beating his fucking meat on the telephone. That's got to piss you off if you're a player. It would piss me off. I'm so tired of it. Um, you know, Harlan Barnett, he's going to be the interim head coach. Mark D'Antonio's coming back. He's going to be the associate head coach. I don't know what that means. I don't know what his role is going to be. I don't know if he'll be on the sideline. I don't know if he's like going to influence the game plan or if he's just there a guy. He's just going to be a guy there for like moral support and to rally the troops and hopefully fire some people up. I don't really know. I guess it's cool that he's coming back, but all these MSU fans rejoicing. I mean, I understand it's fine in in the meantime, like a Band-Aid, a, a sense of stability, but like, D'Antonio didn't leave us in a very good spot. We've said it for four fucking years now. D'Antonio, it's not like he rode off into the sunset. D'Antonio's like, hey, pal, um, you haven't gone outside of the Midwest to go get a player in like five years. We can't make a bowl game. It's you're probably it's probably time for you to, you know, start playing more golf. Let's not pretend like D'Antonio left on a 12-win season. It's great that he's here in the meantime. I'm happy. It'll be cool to see him on the sidelines. And maybe, who fucking knows, maybe in, in D'Antonio fashion, one last time, he'll come out and beat Michigan and beat Washington, like one last crazy storybook ending. But there's a reason we kind of went separate ways. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't just bring back Nick Saban. There's a reason we kind of said, all right, Mark, it's it's time. You should spend time with your family. There's a reason. We'll see what happens against Washington. We'll see how these guys try to stable things and stabilize things and right the ship. But like, I, I, I might be in the minority saying this, but I'm not super fired up. Like, I don't feel great that D'Antonio's coming back. Like, I don't think he's the long-term answer. I would assume nobody at the school does. I don't think he plans on being the long-term answer. It's cool that he's back, but like, bro, the game passed him by. There's a reason we said, yeah, you should probably get going, Mark. There's a reason. It just feels like four years down the drain, four years right back where we started, four years of no fucking progress. We all got excited. We look like clowns. We look like assholes. I look like an idiot. We were puffing our chest, beating our chest, talking about Michigan State, what we're going to do, the recruiting. Look out, Michigan. Look out, Ohio State. Big Ten championships on the way. We were telling anybody who would listen how MSU's on the come up, and here we fucking are right back to where we started. We look like assholes. Sick of it. Tired of a an institution and a program that should be, again, at least respectable, but should be great, has the resources to be great. We've seen them be great. Ten years ago, they're going to celebrate that game, the Rose Bowl against Washington, the Rose Bowl winning team. We've been there, and we can't even get fucking close. I don't know. I'm tired of it. I guess we'll see what happens against Washington, but this shit is it's unacceptable. Um, the, and the worst part is the Lions beat the goddamn Chiefs. The Lions beat the Super Bowl champs in Arrowhead. They didn't even play their best game. Right tackle was false starting the entire fucking game, and they found a way. They lost a game, or they won a game that the Lions have lost their entire my entire life. They found a way to win it, and we're here talking about Michigan State's coach being a fucking degenerate. That pisses me off. Quick break. I guess we'll talk about the lines for a bit. All right. I'm going to try not to get too upset. Um, I think I'm going to be upset forever, quite frankly. I'll probably be 32 years old. It'll be a Tuesday in April, and someone will mention Mel Tucker, and I'll I'll get angry. I will be upset. Um, every year football season will start until I'm 65. I'll probably be a little annoyed at how this all went down, but I'm going to try not to – get angry for the next 20 minutes because the lions the detroit fucking lions did something great god i got the hiccups the detroit lions beat the kansas city chiefs super bowl champs after they hung the banner at arrowhead on national television to open the nfl season they did that that's a fucking fact you can take it to the bank baby you know what the funniest part is 
obviously after the Lions won that game, Detroit fans were having a day, rightfully so, bro. We may have not gone hard enough. We should have thrown a fucking parade. And there's Bears fans, Vikings fans, Packers fans going, <laughs> I actually feel better about the NFC North now after watching that Lions game. Imagine saying that shit. Imagine watching the Detroit Lions, the Detroit Lions beat the Kansas City Chiefs on the road in that game where it every fucking sign you have was pointing towards Mahomes, leading him down the field to win it at the end. And going, I actually feel better about our chances against the Lions. Imagine thinking that. And karma's a bitch. The Buccaneers, who stink, beat the Vikings. Um, the Bears stink, made Jordan Love look like Aaron Rodgers. And I don't think the Packers are that great either. Yeah, they beat the Bears. Good for you. I watched the first half. They looked like shit too. Imagine saying that. Imagine watching the Lions win that game and going, I feel better about that. Are you fucking kidding me? The Lions just beat the Chiefs. I did how the hell does that make you feel better about playing the Detroit Lions? That makes no sense, but who gives a fuck? Cause we're one and know you're not, we beat the chiefs. You won't. It's all good, baby. I can't believe the cats won that game. I, I actually cannot believe it. I said in the post game video, said it earlier in this episode, they've lost that game every single time they've played it since I've been alive. They lost that game to Buffalo on Thanksgiving last year. Um, they lost that game to Seattle. They lost that game to Philadelphia. They lost that game to Minnesota. They lost like five of those last year alone. Every single time they play that game in my life, I'm 26 in my life. Every time they play that game, they lose. And it was the chiefs. I don't care that they didn't have Kelsey. I don't care. They didn't have Chris Jones. Thank God they didn't, but I don't give a fuck. Thank God. Kadarius Tony sucks. They still have Pat Mahomes. They still had Andy Reid. It was still at Arrowhead. And shout out to all the Lions fans who made that trip. That place got loud. The Brian Branch pick, that place got loud. That third and one Matt Nagy Galaxy Brain Jet Suite, that place got loud. Shout out to everybody who was there, but it was still Arrowhead. It was still a banner night. It was still prime time national TV. We had zero of those games other than Thanksgiving last year. We're starting on one of them this year, and they fucking figured out a way. No. I don't think we played particularly great either. Goff was fine, I thought. The offensive line in the run game could have been better. Uh, the play calling at times could have been better. Marvin Jones certainly could have been better. I don't think any of us were too thrilled with the way the offense looked, right? I thought the defense was good. I mean, anytime you hold the Chiefs to 20, that feels like a win. Aiden Hutchinson was a menace to fucking society, dude. I can't believe uh, – it's so funny to me how ridiculous the Michigan-Michigan State rivalry is that when we took Aiden Hutchinson last year, MSU fans just out of spite were like, fuck this guy, he's a bust. That guy was everywhere. He was in Mahomes' face. I don't know if he registered a sack, but it felt like every time Mahomes dropped back to through, Aiden Hutchinson was at least making him a little bit nervous, at least made him move a few times. And while Tony dropped 80 passes, there were a few throws from Mahomes that he had to scamper a bit, and the throw was a little high, it was a little outside. It wasn't quite Mahomes, a lot of that. Aiden Hutchinson, the rest of that defensive line, I thought the secondary was good, all things considered. Um, we stopped the run well, although I don't think the Chiefs really went to the run game too hard. I just can't. Dan Campbell was good. We managed the game well. Um, the fucking fake punt. Are you kidding me? The fake punt. That shit. Nobody calls that but Dan Campbell. Nobody calls that but Dan. And it worked. That's what makes Dan Campbell special. He's a lunatic. This guy's a psychopath. That's what makes him hard to coach against. All of these people, when Dan Campbell got hired, and I saw that fraud Colin Coward go, been a Dan Campbell guy since day one, even though they were ripping him last year. Fucking losers. All of these people in the media, Dan Campbell, he's too much of a meathead. How many coffees does he drink a day? No, Andy Reid's never doing that. Bill Belichick doesn't behave like that. Shut the fuck up. It works. That's what makes Dan Campbell great, is he's a loose fucking cannon. It's tough to coach against what you can't predict. It's tough to prepare for some guy doing some crazy shit you didn't even have on the game plan. It's tough. It's tough to stop the fake punt when you're like, there is no shot. This guy's crazy enough to fake this punt. Unbelievable. Ever, all the way around, dude, the fans. It was a cathartic experience watching that game on Thursday, and it pisses me off that much more that Mel Tucker overshadowed it. Just that much. If I wasn't pissed enough... No one gives a fuck now that the Lions won that game because of Mel Tucker's bitch ass.
fucking drives me nuts. But unbelievable stuff from the Lions, dude. I I don't want to temper expectations because fuck that. If it's not going to be this year, then when? And winning a game like that should only reinforce what all of us thought coming into this season. But holy shit, dude. I, a part of me wants to go, all right, you know, it's just one game. There's 16 more. We got to win a lot more if we're going to win this division and, and at least make the playoffs. There is still work to be done. I know we think the Bears stink. I know the Vikings stink. I know the Packers. We'll see. We still got to beat those guys. We still got to come in ready to play. Seattle, they didn't look very good. We still got to beat them at home. Fort Field is going to crumble to the ground on Sunday. I cannot wait to watch that game with headphones on and the volume at a 1,000. I can't wait to see the turnout in Detroit. I can't wait to feel the energy through the television on Sunday. We still got work to do. There is still all 16 weeks. We still got games to win. That wasn't the end all be all. It was a hell of a start. We still got work to do. But I think these guys are built for it. CJ Gardner was saying it after the game. This ain't the same Detroit, bro. These ain't the same Lions, bro. Jamal Williams said that shit after the Packers game. Stop playing with us. We the Detroit Lions. Stop playing with us. It's all dog around this muck. Fuck that. Still got work to do. But God damn, did that fire me up. God damn it. Did that feel good, dude? God damn it. Once they did it. They fucking did it one time. Forget that it was the Chiefs, too. Forget that, like, the stakes, the Super Bowl, Thursday night, season opener. Starting off fast. When's the last time the Lions have started a season 1-0? and God forbid I say it, 2-0. When's the last time the Lions got off to a good start? I don't fucking remember. 2015, 2013, 2011? I don't remember, bro. When's the last time we got out the gates with a dub? When's the last time we started the season and people weren't going... I don't know about this head coach. I don't know about this quarterback. Well, looks like it'll be the same old lines. When's the last time we started a season without the free press running those headlines? When? I don't remember. I was probably still in high school. It feels good that, like, for once, we were proven right. For once, these guys lived up to the billing. For once. And you know what's crazy? It's like losing that game 21-20 would have been more living up to the billing. Losing that game by a field goal, Pat Mahomes going down at the end and winning that game would have still been like, all right, we can play with those guys. All right, we are still we still can be what we think we are. And that, that wasn't good enough for them. They didn't want to lose close. They didn't want to give them a game. <laughs> they, didn't, they weren't okay being a victim to Pat Mahomes like everybody else is. They said, fuck that. We're winning this thing. We're taking the whole shit. God, it felt good to watch. God, it feels good to be a Lions fan. God, it felt good to be in a bar in Southern California decked out in Lions gear and go, fuck yeah, you see that shit? You see that shit? We just beat the Chiefs. This ain't the same old Lions. It felt good. I thought Jared Goff was good. He made some big time throws. Still hurts that he's a statue, but with the old line we got, That'll be okay. He made some big throws. Ben Johnson, the only thing I was a little bit like, a couple of those fourth down calls, a couple of the third and short calls, like the screens when it's third and eight. And we're playing, I think we were playing for a field goal. And you're just going to throw out a, a flash screen to Marvin Jones or, or Craig Reynolds or someone who isn't, say, Amon Ross St. Brown or Jameer Gibbs. We, you're just kind of conceding. It's like if we're going to run a play like that where you're just saying, hey, this is pretty much taking a knee. We're going to settle for the three points or take it to half or punt it away or whatever we're going to do. If you're going to run a play like that, why don't you give it to somebody who has some upside? Why don't you run that play to someone who might be able to break it and pick up the first down? What's the point in running that play to a Marvin Jones who's washed up, who can't make people miss, who can't even catch the fucking ball? What's the point of running that play to that guy? Like if, if you're dead set on running the conservative play, on just taking what they gave us, then give it to someone with a little bit of upside. Give us at least a chance to pick up the first down. I didn't love that. The fourth down play calling didn't love. I know people are upset Jameer Gibbs didn't get a ton of touches. You know, I agree in some ways, but I also don't hate, like David Montgomery is the guy. When we're running it between the tackles in the fourth quarter and kind of milking the clock, David Montgomery, that's why we have him. Right, Jameer Gibbs, it's his first NFL game. Maybe you don't trust him as much to not fumble it or to miss the hole or whatever the case is. I don't have a problem with that. But like I said, those screen passes, if you're just conceding, you're going to give it to a guy in space. Give it to Jameer Gibbs. 
Like, let him be the guy. He might be able to pick up that first down. And when he did get the ball, he was fucking electric. He would have scored that touchdown in the first quarter if he hadn't slipped. Um, he had a couple runs when he did get the ball. He bounced off tackles, made people miss, made more than was there given the play design. I think he'll be in the offense more and more as the season goes on. I think they, yeah, you know, they probably want to get him a little more acclimated to NFL speed, maybe with the playbook, whatever the case is. I don't have a huge problem with it, and I do trust. Like, they saw the game. They see what happens when he gets the ball. I think they're going to use him more and more as the season goes on. I thought the O-line was good. Um, I would have liked to impose our will a little bit more in the run game, especially without a Chris Jones. But again, it's week one. That'll come with time. I like the aggression from Dan Campbell. I like the aggression from the defense. We talked about Aiden Hutchinson. I think the secondary clearly has upgraded. I don't know if this secondary or even this defense, you know, I don't know if they're going to be a top 10 defense or anything nuts, but I think they'll be all right. I think they'll be adequate. I think they'll be what we need them to be to win 11 games, to win 12 games. I think they have that inside them, and I think they'll get better. Like James Houston, I would have liked to see him play more. It was pretty evident early on that the Chiefs were kind of going, yeah, we'll run it here and there to keep you guys honest, but we're just going to let Mahomes sit back and do his thing. And it was evident pretty early on that we were struggling to get to Mahomes. And when we did, we struggled to take him down. Get James Houston more reps. That's why he's on the team. He was sick at rushing the passer last year. He came on a little bit more in the second half. We got to get Hutch some help. We got to get Aiden Hutchinson some help. This guy can't fight through double teams every single play, right? He's got a freak motor. He never gives up. He's a De Detroit Dan Campbell guy, and I love him. We got to get him some help. Can't expect him to do it all on his own. Um, but, yeah, I do think the secondary is way better. Mosley, C.J. Gardner-Johnson had some plays. Um, Cam Sutton, I know he got flagged for the P.I. Tough play is what it is. But I thought they were a lot tighter than the secondary we saw last year. Again, against Pat Mahomes. We got diced by Geno Smith last year. We held Pat Mahomes in check for the most part. Some drops, yeah, that helped. But we were still there. We still made some plays. They punted a bunch. Forced a turnover, you know. Um... I don't know, dude. I'm just happy. I'm just happy that, you know, for the first time in my life, fall has come around and I'm not saying, well, at least I have Michigan State. I'm not saying, well, at least basketball season's coming up. I'm not saying, well, at least the leaves are changing. I'm saying at least we got the Lions. That's crazy. At least we got the Lions. It feels fucking incredible, bro. And there's no fan base in the country, probably in all of sports, certainly in North American sports. There's no fan base that deserves it more than us. And it looks like we got a team, man. It looks like we got a team. It looks like we've got a division to win. There is no boogeyman in Aaron Rodgers. The Vikings aren't stacked. The Bears don't have a defense that makes your butthole clench. We've got a division to win, and we've got a team that can fucking win it. It's uncharted territory. It, we we are on a, we are on a ship in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean with no compass right now. I don't know where the fuck we go, but Dan Campbell he's got a gut feeling, and I'm willing to follow that. Dan he somehow knows how to read the stars. North stars that one. I'll take your word for it, Dan. I fell asleep in astronomy class. Let's go that way if you think so. Feels fucking good. I think we're only going to get better. I think the offense. I expect them at home. At Ford Field, inside, electric atmosphere, a week of preparation, you know, one game out of the way. The preseason doesn't really mean shit. Jared, Go like, did Jared Goff play, what, a series? Did he even play in the preseason? We got more time where these guys can kind of become a cohesive unit, get used to the way each other plays. I think the offense will be way better next week against Seattle. I think the defense will improve. I The atmosphere is going to be incredible. I expect us to get to 2-0, and but I they fucking did it, bro. I'm just so happy that they did. 1-0, season opener, national TV. We beat the Kansas City fucking Chiefs, the Super Bowl champs, in their house in a game that felt all signs, bro. I was I took a piss at halftime. Went to wash my hands because I'm a good boy, and I was eating pizza, and I looked in the mirror, and I go, here we go again, dude. Here we go again. Marvin Jones fumbled in the red zone. They got three. Here we go again, bro. The offense couldn't get a first down. Here we go again, man. Don't tell me it's the same shit. Don't tell me we're going down the same road. I had that internal dialogue. Nope. I was wrong. They proved me wrong. Fuck yeah. Prove me wrong. I'm an idiot. 
They fucking proved me wrong, and they did it. They found a way. In the most anti-Detroit Lions fashion of all time, they found a way. Brian Branch, the rookie making a play. Jack Campbell, that pass breakup he had, unbelievable. Jameer Gibbs making plays when he gets the ball. All those people shitting on Brad Holmes. How about how you like him now? They're real quiet now. Jack, Jack Campbell, Brian Branch, they weren't such bad ideas now. <coughs> Fucking incredible. 1-0. and We'll be back again on Thursday. We're, we're, it's football season. We got Michigan State. We got Michigan. Michigan took care of East Car- or, uh, UNLV. Not much to say about that. I mean, they won a game they were supposed to win. They won it by a lot. They got another cupcake next week. <sighs> it's football season. We're in the thick of it. We'll be back Thursday. We'll talk more Lions, Seahawks. We'll talk Michigan State, Washington. I don't know who Michigan plays. I know it's a bum school. Hopefully it'll be more positive vibes. Hopefully I'll be a little bit more cooled off with Mel Tucker being a fucking asshole. Appreciate you guys. The Lions are 1-0. The Lions are 1-0. The Li- the Detroit Lions are 1-0. and Appreciate all of you. Hey, also, before I let you go, Detroit Lions, new design, unreal. It's fucking nasty. Design of the year. It's dropping this weekend. You got to have it if you're a Lions fan. I'll see you guys Thursday.